Hey there, gel pressers, and welcome to today's video. So today is gonna be a little bit different. Today, I wanna challenge you to use your art journal a little bit differently. So my family and I are getting ready to go on our first ever big theme park vacation. We are getting ready to go to Universal Studios. So all the Potterheads are like, yes, we're very excited. So I wanna challenge you guys to, to use your art journal maybe a little bit differently. I know we use it for self-expression, for artistic expression, but I want you guys to try to use your art journal for memory keeping. So today's project is all about commemorating the fact that we are gonna go visit Harry Potter world, the wizarding world of Harry Potter to be exact in just a few days. And then I'm gonna use it with my gel press and just have some fun with it. Also, if you guys wanna recreate this project, I will put a link to the printables and cuttables that I have that I'm going to be using down in the comments for you guys or actually in the description so that you guys can recreate this if you guys want to. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you have fun and it challenges you to use your art journal for a little memory keeping. And don't forget to like and subscribe guys. All right, gel pressers, like I said in our introduction, today's going to be just a play day in my art journal um, and kind of using these golden so flat matte acrylics with some stencils and some masks just to create a really yummy and fun background. This is one of my favorite vintage stencils. It's from the Crafters Workshop. I'll make sure to list all the stencils I use down below for you guys. And I'm just kind of having fun. The whole goal of this is just to make a bright and fun background, which kind of is a little bit in contrast with the concept of the, the Deathly Hollows and kind of that kind of thing. So I really wanted it to just be bright and fun and just lots of layers. And so super excited about uh, this project. Project, and I'm super excited that we are going to Universal here shortly. Um, I just, ah, we've never been, and I think it'll be great. Um, I want to make sure all my layers are dried in between. As you can see, I'm using a heat gun. Just be careful with it. It's actually better to use a hair dryer, but mine wasn't available at this point. And so just make sure that if you're using a heat gun, it's just quick strokes across it. I love this little butterfly mask as well. So I wanted to incorporate something winged flying kind of thing to kind of give that nod to the flying broomsticks of the Harry Potter world and that kind of thing. I always try to, I don't know, my brain just works that way that when I'm doing prints or I'm doing projects that I want to put symbolism in it and I just like it. It's kind of how my brain works. But I just love just this little bit of wing, this little bit of butterfly going on in the, this background. And I'll leave a link to these paints in the, the description as well. I just love them. They're just bright and funky. They actually came as a set, which was super nice because I didn't have to choose which colors I wanted. And they are a little bit difficult to work with in the fact that I think uh, I'm just not used to using the palette knife. I'm used to just being able to kind of squeeze it out. So it does take a little bit getting used to and figuring out how much paint you really need. This is one of my foam stamps from Art Foamies and I love it because it gives me throwback Nickelodeon Gax Blatt, uh vibes and so it's one of my favorites for my collection. Again, I'll link that down there. Um, I also used a little bit of Delusions ink just to kind of add some splatters I didn't know how well it would work because they are super water-based and I didn't want to wait for them to dry. So I hit them with my heat gun just a little bit. This was mainly just to be able to add a little bit more texture. And I thought I would be cool. And this is actually a glow-in-the-dark paint. And so I thought I would be super cool and that this project would end up glowing. But hey, sometimes it's a fail and it doesn't quite work that way. But that's okay. The project is still great. <laughs> um, this book is actually from Amsterdam. Um, actually, sorry, Royal Talents. It's from their art creation line. It is their mixed media paper pad. Um, it is super great, super thick. I'm loving using it because um, it allows me to add a lot of texture and a lot of moisture without it kind of freaking out on you. Like I said also in the intro, I will get the, uh, I will leave the print printable file or the cutting file, whichever you prefer, in the description for you guys in case you decide you want to use this um, and make a project similar. 
I wanted to kind of play with the idea that you see with a lot of the Deathly Hollow symbols where it has some kind of like element like flowers or watercolors and that kind of thing around it. So I, I had these uh, flowers that I kind of altered the colors of to make them a little brighter and then used my Cricut to cut them out on printable vinyl so that I could just layer them around. And I just love the contrast of the really black Deathly Hollow symbol with my super bright background and bright flowers. And I was just loving it. I thought it needed a little bit of um, just depth. So I'm taking a Scribe All pencil, which is a water-soluble pencil, and kind of just going around it. You'll see here in a little bit that I actually ended up not loving it. And the reason I left this in here, I thought about cutting it out, is I wanted to show you guys that sometimes things don't work out. Um, sometimes you have an idea and it doesn't quite go the way you wanted, and that's okay. Art's not about being perfect. Art is about making mistakes and figuring out how to make it better once that mistake is there. Um, I really thought that this Scribal pencil would be a little blacker. I haven't used it in a while than it ended up being. So you can see I'm really trying, but that's okay. It didn't work out the way I wanted. I just had to figure out a way around it. And um, so in a little bit, you'll see that I actually pull out a different uh, medium in order to kind of get that, the pop that I was really wanting. But like I said, I left it in here because I wanted to show, especially when you see these videos, you see these perfect prints, these perfect projects, all that kind of stuff. And it's not truth. We all make mistakes. Even those people, those of us that do this for a living and do this on YouTube, we make mistakes. We do stuff that doesn't quite work out. Um, and so I wanted you guys to know, and that's why I left it in there, because I just think it's important to know that even those of us who do this for a living aren't perfect. So I decided to go in also, and this is a really great thing to do if you have prints that have a lot of patterns. Go in with your black pen, your white pen, whatever you happen to have, and outline some of those images. It really gives more texture and detail and pop to your background. Um, I'm using a white gel pen um, just to kind of outline all the orange circles that I created. And I just feel like it adds more interest, it adds more detail. It's just super fun, and you know, everybody loves a good white gel pen. So here's where I decided to actually go in and make that a little darker, that halo that I kind of distressing that I had going on. This is actually a Faber-Castell Pit Artist pen. Um, and what I like to do with it is actually draw the line. And before it has time to dry, to smudge it with my finger, that gives you a nice soft look, but it still keeps that darker intense color than the Scryball did. And I really feel like this did more of what I was hoping that pencil would do. So it just took, you know, a little bit more time, but that's okay. I also love the Pit Artist pens because they are India ink, so when they are dry, they are permanent. So if I wanted to go back and add more things on top of this, I wouldn't have to worry about that pen um, getting gross or anything like that or smearing and ruining all of my hard work. So these are some of my new favorite ones. If you haven't tried these yet, these are paint pens from a brand called Edding. Apparently they used to only be available in the UK and now they are available here in the US. They are super great. This is their ultra fine point and I have just really loved using it. Um, they are great um, opaque coloring and just I don't have any problems with gunking or any of that kind of stuff. So I'll leave a link to those down below too because they're super fun to work with. And I just love using this white just for some pop of color and some highlighting. And the black, of course, is going to be used to use the, write the iconic word always. If you're a Potterhead, you know what I mean. So I'm going to add a little bit of a border and that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed today's project, that it was fun and entertaining and inspires you to use your art journaling for a little bit of memory making as well. Thank you guys for joining me today and I will see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.